Um, elephants on site is one. You can't uh, trade the ivory anymore, but however you can sport hunt it for a hefty price. And that money obviously goes back to conserve elephants. And it's very hard to find one that, that fits the requirements of the government. Here in Tanzania, we have to either shoot them on length or weight, and they have to be either one meter in length, or one tusk has to be bigger than 17 kilograms. Um, so you want about 38 pounds. It's very well regulated and monitored. And uh, it's very difficult to find a big uh, elephant these days. You see a lot of tracks, so that's normally the way we uh, we hunt them is you just pick up a fresh track on the road when you're driving in the morning. If you see a track by a salt lick or a water hole or something, you pick it up. But often you'll just bump into them too and then you just stalk them. You know, sometimes the wind might be wrong and they run away. You just track them and catch up with them. So uh, it's pretty fun. Sometimes you bump into them from really close, you'd be surprised. It takes a lot of studying elephant skulls and understanding their, their anatomy to, to make the, the shot. Definitely isn't anything for any amateur just to go ahead and do. It's a lot of hard work. Uh, they say you'll uh, walk a mile for every half a pound of ivory you get. So uh, nothing easy about elephant hunting. I don't think they're big enough. They're not big enough. All bulls are. Those ones got a wind a bit earlier. See the one turning face, eh? Yeah. Nice to see the old bulls. Huh? That's exciting. Oh, I have no idea how big those things are when you're right now. What's this? First rains of the season, huh? Eh? Is this the start of the rainy season right now? Right now. We've had rain at night time before, but it's the first time during the day it's rained the really? season. The game moves where the rain is too. They can smell it, so even in advance they start moving here. It's good for muzzleloading. Excellent. When your gunpowder gets away. Yeah, I know. It's going to be good for tracking elephants. Tracking elephants, eh? White camp set up. We'll be sleeping under the stars. It's the rainy season starting, right? Eh? And we got hammered. That's why everything's hanging up. We got soaked. We're gonna head out and try and pick up elephant tracks. Okay. See what movement there's been in the night. So we can find anything big that's fresh. Then we'll follow them up. We'll just see. A lot of elephant movement at the moment though. Well, how many elephants is that? How many elephants is that today? Probably 140 or something. How many? 140 elephants in one day. Just herd after herd after herd.
exit stage right. The sight, one with its ears open, is big trouble. Not there. You gotta be so careful in a herd with cows and cows and young bulls because they're the bad news. Often you will get uh, very close to to a car that might have a, a calf or a young male, and they're very nervous animals, genetic animals, and they charge very easily. You know, and not comfortable being around a human at all. So it, it can get very dangerous at times. You've always got to take it slowly and watch the wind and you know, try not to make a situation happen, but sometimes you can't, can't help it. You've still got to hunt the elephant. Which one, Mike? Cha, 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 Tell them. That's too small. Tell them to go away. What is with these elephants and their attitude? Gee, what is, isn't that something? They are nasty. We had looked at more than 300 elephants by that point in the safari, and honestly, I was starting to whine a little bit. And of course, that's when it happened. Out of a deep ravine walked the biggest elephant that Mike said he's ever seen in all his years as a professional hunter in Tanzania. It was ancient, twice as big as all the other elephants we'd seen. There he is, Jim. That one there, there's more to the right. He's the shooter, we can shoot him. They're gonna go. Come quickly, come quickly. Kubo Kabisa. We saw that big bull last night. We decided not to go after him. Then we tried, but decided not to push him. Now we're going to go find this herd, hopefully. They've got a, a whole night ahead of us, plus this morning. It's going to be a long day. We brought lots of water. Remind me to come elephant hunting with Mike Fell ever again. Hey Mike, how far have we walked today? 17 miles in blistering heat. Six hours and 30 minutes straight. If we could find an elephant, that'd be better. We tracked the herd for two more hours before we finally caught up to them. But there was a major problem. The entire herd was stretched out down in the shadows of a deep karungwa, a ravine. And the only way we could get close enough to find out which was the big bull was to enter the danger zone.
Toca. 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 It's a male. Yeah. It was a really sad moment for all of us. It wasn't the bull that we were after, but Mike had no choice. It was either that bull or us. And ethically, too, I had no choice. My hunt was over. Training my entire hunting career for this hunt right now for elephant. It's the best place in the world for your first elephant and probably my only elephant. I guess we'll find out in the next few days if I'm up to the task, if I've trained hard enough. God, I hope so. The alternative isn't real good. Dangerous animals. Got a nice little swimming pool for us. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Don't need sea hunt lessons. Don't need sea hunt lessons. <laughs> Don't be walking up behind me like that. In elephant country here like that. You're like I didn't turn around and like totally kung fu ya. You underestimated my sneakiness. Uh, how's it going? What's happening? Oh, jeez. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. The, 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 holy smokes, look at that cameraman. He's a famous cameraman. <laughs> oh, mercy. Uh, you know, I was saying it to the camera, going, I've been dreaming about this since I was a kid. I can't wait. And then someone told me Michael was there. It's like, it's like, it's like dirty nightmare. or something. Oh, it's like, ew, <laughs> ew, ew. I'm Ronnie Blackbeard. 
I'm a professional hunter in Botswana. I've been hunting now professionally for 38 years, I think, to be exact. On this particular safari, I've been dropped a bombshell by the management here. I've been told I'm taking out a Mr. Jim Shockey, who's going to be hunting with a muzzle loader. This is unknown here in Botswana. So I guess I'm in for some punishment because the famous Mr. Shockey is going to prove to me that he can drop an elephant with a muzzle loader. I'm not all that sure on this. Uh, I'd like to see his face when we pull the trigger on that huge animal because he thinks this is hunting uh, muskrats in the, in the jungle somewhere. This ain't no muskrat. This is an elephant. The way we're going to try and uh, go about this hunt is we're going to do a lot of actual traversing. We would like to go quickly around, do more mileage, see more elephants, to try and get an, a decent elephant to shoot and to get uh, Jim into a shooting position. We have to shoot within 20 to 30 meters maximum with this muzzle load, I, I'm told by him. The wind will be our factor. We've got to get in quickly. We've got to do it smartly to get in this close to an animal to shoot with a muzzle loader like this. We're not only going to be seeing elephants, we, we'll be seeing a number of uh, species. We'll see quite a lot of giraffe, we'll see kudu, we'll see some magnificent sable. There's good buffalo in the area, plenty of zebra. If we're lucky enough, we can get ourselves into a position where we can see some nice lions. There are very good lions in this area, which is very nice. It makes a break from just seeing lots and lots of elephants all the time. We're going to be situated up in the northern part of Botswana in what is commonly known as community areas. We take all our meat and it's taken back to these communities. This northern Botswana here are very poor people up here. Botswana is only the size of Texas and we have got in this country at the moment figures that are indicating that we have got over 180,000 elephants in 10% of the land. If you can imagine 180,000 elephants in 10% of Texas, you would see what I'm talking about as far as the devastation goes to our pristine forests, our pristine river forests are completely wiped out by these huge animals. They are breeding out of control. The people do not understand that we are hunting something that is not on the verge of extinction. I feel that hunting is one of the best remedies trying to solve this huge problem that we've got on our hand. We're going on hunting. First morning. We're heading out. See what happens. Biggest elephant I've ever seen. <laughs> There's full elephants everywhere around here. Everywhere we've seen, I don't know how many say already. Lots. Baby, baby, I want it. That's 
pretty cool. Let's go look for a bigger one now. Hmm. That's Cape Buffalo. The whole entire herd just came right by in front of us. They're, they're Magnificent and, and mean looking. Mean as heck. I'm glad we're not going after him. He was gigantic. You see his ears came right up and looking at us. Holy. This is this is him here. Look at that. That's whew. it doesn't get any more intense than that when that bull came on just had us pegged. His ears came wide open. I don't know what it looks like on camera, but to me, he's 30 feet tall. His ears spread out about 25 feet. So he's over 50 pounds per side, but Ronnie figures we can get an older one if we, we wait. Older's better, so <clears throat> let's keep looking. Intended. Those things are giving me the heebie jeebies when we drive by. I don't know, it's, it's dangerous. To me, it's dangerous. Maybe they don't think it's dangerous to live here, but when a six ton animal it takes offense to me standing in the back of this truck, there's not much you can do except jump off the far side. It's 
spooky. Spooky stuff. Kidney, he's 14 feet tall. Oh, creepy. Uh oh, should that help me? There's elephants all around us right now. In front of us, behind us, on each side of us. Oh, 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 oh. Don't. We're leaving. Bye bye, Mama. Bye bye, Mama. <laughs> well, yeah, it's funny when they don't kill you, but when they kill you, it's not so funny. That's the result of too many elephants in an area. That's not poached. That just died because there's too many ele elephants here. They're destroying their own habitat. This bush encroachment in here is because of the elephants. The trees have all been knocked down. People don't realize, they think that elephants are in danger. Well, they are in parts of Africa. The northwest part, Chad and CAR, where I was earlier this year, there's Sudanese poachers everywhere, shooting them, chasing them on horses, killing them off, destroying them entire herds, but here in Botswana, there's too many elephants. Hmm. Really sad. Here's another, another dead elephant. Fanny is one of the top people in the game department here in the Chobe area. Natural death, yeah, not poached because the tusks are still here. So it's just a... Overpopulation. Overpopulation, yeah. You need more hunting. Huh? More hunting is good. Mm, more hunting is good. Yeah. There's another dead elephant. That's the third one we've come across this morning. So sad. Oh, 
Holy smokes, Ronnie. Well Thank you. Thank you. Look at the size. Hey. Thank you, guys. Ronnie, I'm shaking. Thank you. Holy smokes. That long log with a good shot. It's 27 yards. Close. <laughs> Holy smokes, Ronnie, I've been on. This is my seventh elephant hunt. I have never got an elephant. Uh, we got one now after a battle. Oh, you have no idea. That's that's been years, years. This is this is the the highest point of my hunting career. There's nothing else I can hunt that would ever be like this. Someone asked me at the beginning of the hunt, you know, what was my my passion for hunting elephant. I, I said it's not a passion, it's, it's a passage. It's a passage. It's beautiful. 